This is the most dangerous part of our garden. All of these little stalks here are plants of the genus Drosera. And Drosera are plants that catch, kill, and eat insects. The more astute of you may have noticed that we're missing one part of our tuberous drosera over here. And now you may be wondering where did it go? Why did it leave us? Can we get it back? And the answer to the question is that I just moved it. So don't worry about that. And here she is. This is Drosera Modesta. And you may be wondering, you know, like where do these guys get these weird names from? Why do these Italian slash Spanish slash English, etc. taxonomists make up these really weird names and this one actually has a really valid reason as to why it's called Trostra Modesta and the reason why she's called this is because she is very modest as you can tell she's not very flashy she has nice traps but she doesn't like to flaunt them everywhere this is a tuberous Drosera Drosera also known as sundews and these are plants that catch and kill insects using their little traps that you can see right there and we have this Drosera this tuberous Drosera in a 20 centimeter pot or 18 centimeters, I don't really remember. It doesn't make a difference anyway. And that's about this much in, in American. And the reason why we have them in such a long, well, tall pot like this is because in winter, which it is now in Australia, because, you know, Australia is upside down and everything's uh, backwards. Um, it's winter in Australia. That means that they're growing in winter. So they have tubers at about this level and the rest is all roots and from the tuber upwards is these stolons and on the end of the stolons you get these traps that catch all these little insects as you can see there's one right there and then in summertime it's the opposite because you know in australia it gets super hot and super dry in from where they're from which is western australia mostly and then that means that they need to go to sleep so they form those little tubers that i was sp speaking about basically potatoes underground they make the little potato they hide there and they store all the energy in there for winter when they can grow again. And now something that I really like about this drudder, I mean this drossera, is that it has really nice traps. The traps are kind of circular, but you can kind of see how at the top left and right, there's these little, what, what you call them, trachomes or tentacles, whatever, that stick off. And it kind of look, looks like, like a bull, you know, with the two horns, quite like it, it's really interesting. And I'm also quite happy with the color. It's, it's really green. Some of the other Drosera are a little bit more red, like orangey. And I really like that it's green because it kind of stands out. And yeah, I really like that about it. And it's also a really quick grower. It wasn't the first uh, tuberous Drosera to sprout for us, but it was one of the first and it's the biggest as well. Some of the other ones are around one to two inches. This one's reaching about four inches now. One, okay, I lied. Three, about three, three inches now. And I really like how quick and fast they grow and, and the traps are, you know, pretty big. It's about, about a centimeter, just under a centimeter in size in the traps. And it's really good because it means it can catch all those insects that always land on us and bite us and suck our blood and annoy us. I don't know if you guys even get this type of insects in America or other places of the world, but in Australia there's like these flies and they land on you and then they, they bite you and they suck your blood. And it's like, it's like, hold up, what the f***? These flies eat blood. I mean, I've heard of it, but to have it actually experienced, experienced it, it's really, really shitty. Anyway, to look after these guys, these tuberous drosera, it's very easy. You have to make sure that you give them the right soil. They don't like to have a lot of soil because if you give them too many, too much soil, they complain that they're spoilt and then they, you know, because they're plants, they die. So you have to make sure that they're in peat and sand. No, no fertilizers or anything, because as I said, they'll die. And they like to, they like to suntan a lot. So you must make sure that you keep them outside. Give them as much sun as you possibly can, so they can, you know, suntan and they're not pale. So they don't complain about, you know, being mistreated or whatever, not getting what they need, etc. And obviously, watering is a big thing as well. 
give it about one glass of water every night after a meal um, and then they'll be happy with that <clears throat> and don't worry about the meals they're strong and independent they can catch their own meals by themselves they'll catch them with these awesome traps and then you can watch them close around the prey um, and stare at them be a little bit creepy stare at them for a couple hours or you could just you know check up every now and then it's your choice but anyway in a little bit we're gonna feed this trap here an insect and we will time lapse it and see all the tentacles going over the insect. I think you guys will, will really enjoy that and obviously I will because I like staring at my plants all the time because I'm weird like that. As I said this plant is native to Australia, uh, mainly Western Australia and you may be wondering like why do they eat insects or how do they eat the insects uh, or like how they came about to do that? Well it's really it's quite simple right? They would complain about having rich soils all the time basically that they they didn't want to be spoiled anymore so they decided to live in areas that have very little nutrients and in such they they got hungry you know obviously if you don't eat anything you're gonna get hungry especially if you're in an area that has no no nutrients nothing to eat nothing to sustain yourself so they were like this i'm gonna form a way to catch my own food and eventually over however many million years they came up with a decision to make these stalk and then have the little traps branching out with the sticky bits on it to you know obviously catch the insects because it's sticky and insects are stupid they'll land on it and they'll get stuck and then while the insect struggles the traps slowly close around it and that's what makes these plants super super interesting is that not only do they catch their own food and you don't have to worry about feeding them you can actually watch them move around the food and that's something that's super interesting so i've been talking about feeding this plant and watching it eats and whatever so let's actually go get an insect now and let's watch it so what i've got here is some kind of a wasp fly thing i don't like it it has like a scary stinger kind of towel and it was kind of dying in my kitchen anyway so I'll... so I, I figured that i'll just put it out here
So as you can tell, not much happened because as I said, she's quite modest. She's not gonna show off in front of everyone. But the real reason is actually because I got this fly and it was basically dead anyway. And the traps need like the insect to move so it knows, you know, something's on my leaf. But this, um, wait. I'll be back, just wait. They need movement on the leaves or else they're not gonna you know, close around and try and eat it. Yes, bird. So yeah, and I got it dead. So essentially not much happened. But if you guys want to see better, like more up close, better macro shots, please make sure to like this video so that the YouTube algorithm knows that this is a good video and I can hopefully, if I can afford to get better videos for you guys because I am recording on my iPhone and the quality on iPhone is good but the macros are not the best. So if you guys wanna see more of that, make sure that you do like this video. And if if you enjoy just growing plants, cannabis plants, any plants, and you wanna learn more, or you wanna find out more about the plants, tips, grow the, them with us, feel free to subscribe. You can see all of these plants um, that we have here. What's going on? There we go. So yeah, as I said, all of these, all of these plants out here, we grew together. We will be growing our collection together and we will be talking about all our just different drosera over the next coming days. Oh my God. All these different drosera over the next few days. And as you can see, you get different ones. Like this one here, the traps are completely different. They're like upside down, super interesting. These ones are also different, but similar. You know, and there's, lo there's lots of different things. These guys are still yet to open. Over here, got some of the babies coming out now. You can see like those red specks of babies. And let me see some green ones. Oh, there we go. See some green specks, this is some Drostrica pensis. Really can't wait for these guys to start growing. But yeah, as I said, if you guys really enjoy this kind of stuff, please remember to um, subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos. Put them back, you see, it's, it's becoming nighttime now, making sure that she gets her glass of water in the water tray. So yeah, thank you guys. I hope you enjoy this. Um, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.